Welcome to the 2022 Legislative Update. Today we'll review bills adopted in the past legislative session that affected local governments. You'll notice that there were several bills affecting elections, a high priority this year, as well as grammar and data security. Note that bills affecting little manual or uniform accounting manual topics are already incorporated into those publications' 2022 revised versions. Consult with your legal counsel and associations for how these bills specifically affect your entity. Our first bill is HB 22, Open and Public Meetings Act modifications. This was the result of pandemic conditions and a lack of understanding of electronic quorum definitions. It requires the governing body to establish how a quorum is calculated for electronic meetings. It also prohibits the governing body from allowing a member to vote via proxy during an electronic meeting unless already statutorily authorized. Also, all non-unanimous votes during an electronic meeting are to be taken via roll call. HB 41, County Property Tax Statement Amendments. This repeals the requirement that the county auditor annually provide our office a property tax statement. HB 67, Voter Roll Maintenance Amendments. This requires the LG's office and county clerks to take action to regularly update the official register of voters. It also requires instructions on the outside of an envelope for returning a ballot mailed to the wrong address. HB 96, Government Records Fee Amendments. Entities may now charge a fee for the first 15 minutes of staff time responding to a grammar request if the requester submitted a separate request within 10 days and isn't a media representative. HB 151, Retail Facility Incentive Payments Amendments. This eliminates all sales tax incentives for retail. There are several exceptions. For example, if the retail is located in a 4th, 5th, or 6th class county, census tract areas with average income below 70% of the county median for 51% of the population, specific housing projects, and nonprofits. If there are violations, the Governor's Office of Economic Development will notice those entities, and then our office will be notified if misused funds aren't recouped. HB 205, County Officer Fees Amendments. This requires a county legislative body to adopt an ordinance or resolution that establishes fees for certain county services provided by a county officer, except for recorder's fees, sheriff's fees, county constables, and statutory fees. HB 237, Local District Modifications. This requires a district to make a tentative budget available to the public at least seven days before adopting the budget at the local district's office, on the Utah Public Notice website, and on the district's website if the district has a website. HB 345, Public Safety Employee Personal Data Amendments. This extends personal information protection from officers to all public safety employees, such as dispatchers, law enforcement agency employees, correctional facility employees, and family members. HB 388, Local District Amendments. This modifies provisions related to adopting a resolution related to a local district, modifies the requirements for being a board member of certain local districts, modifies requirements related to obtaining insurance coverage, modifies the requirements for appointing a board member, modifies requirements related to a person filing to become a candidate for an elective position on a local district board, and also changes compensation, provisions, purchasing, and provisions related to the authority of a municipal services district. HB 399, Government Record Amendments. This establishes that the employee statement or Garrity interview given during an entity's investigation into possible wrongdoing is a protected record. HB 439, Elected Public Body Transparency Amendments. Public bodies with elected members must record in minutes the name of each member and their action for each vote, yes, no, or absent. For electronic meetings, entities must provide body members instructions on how to connect to the meeting at least 24 hours in advance. SB 11, Local Election Amendments. This clarifies the definition of an election and a race, and it also clarifies the requirements for a municipality or local district canceling a local election if the ballot won't include any contested races or propositions, and no later than 20 days before the election, the legislative body passes a resolution canceling the election and certifying that the election ballot wouldn't include any contested races or ballot propositions, and the candidates who qualified for the ballot are considered elected. SB 19, Election Revisions. This changes the dates of a special election in an odd-numbered year to coincide with the dates of municipal elections. It adds sample ballots to a list of ballot errors that a candidate can petition, and it adds altering documents to the crime of destroying election documents or supplies.
This provides for a voter's party affiliation to be changed to unaffiliated if the voter is affiliated with a party that is no longer a registered political party. It also modifies the deadline for determining whether a municipality will conduct an election by ranked choice voting to coincide with the deadline for publishing a notice of an election. And it also clarifies that both paid and unpaid board of directors positions should be disclosed to comply with conflict of interest requirements. SB 25, Property Tax Deferral Amendments. This addresses property tax deferral for certain owners of a single family residence, it modifies the interest rate that applies to deferred property taxes, and clarifies the required contents of an application for a deferral. SB 32, Voting History Amendments. This requires an election officer to, when reporting voting history for an election, include certain information relating to a voter whose voter registration is classified as private, without disclosing the identity of the voter. SB 75, Fine Amendments. This requires our office to monitor the amount of traffic fines a local government collects. It clarifies when an interlocal agreement may alter the division of fine revenue, and it limits the amount of fine revenue a local government may use for the local government's general fund revenue. Specifically, revenue from traffic fines may not exceed 25% of a local government's total general fund revenue for a fiscal year. Additionally, within 30 days of fiscal year end, a local government needs to transfer traffic fine revenues in excess of 25% of GF revenue to the state treasurer to be allocated to UDOT for Class B and Class C roads. SB 87, Court Fee Waiver Amendments. This defines the term indigent and allows court fees, costs, or security to be waived for indigent individuals. SB 92, Project Entity Oversight Modifications. This requires project entities to comply with OTMA, describe situations in which a project entity may close a meeting under the Open and Public Meetings Act, and requires entities to adopt provisions related to procurement and comply with the Utah Procurement Code. SB 140, Housing and Transit Reinvestment Zone Amendments. This allows housing and transit reinvestment zones around light rail and bus rapid transit facilities. SB 162, County Governance Amendments. This defines what a finance officer is, and that is the county auditor or person selected to perform accounting services, or for purposes of preparing the tentative budget in a county operating under a county executive council form of county government, the county executive. It also changes the duties of the county auditor, a county finance officer, and a county legislative body relating to the provision of accounting services, and modifies the authority of a county legislative body and a county executive to receive financial information. SB 254, Government Records Access Revisions. This exempts certain records related to a governmental entity's security measures from GRAMA. Those include terrorist activity mitigation plans, emergency and disaster response and recovery plans, or the results of a risk assessment or security audit. It also classifies certain drinking water and wastewater data as a protected record under GRAMA. Those include facility engineering or architectural drawings, and records detailing tools and processes used to secure those drawings. If you have additional questions or concerns, consult with your legal counsel or association general counsel, and you can also contact us.